Um, next story. I want to talk about um, what's his face, NBA young boy, and I love McConan, especially I love McConan. Now I've got sympathy for I love McConan because I feel like I've had the similar thoughts as I love McConan. I think most people who work within the creative and you know industry or the entertainment industry, because those industries are very hard to kind of crack and to kind of break through. There is no template to make it as an artist, as a DJ, as a creative director, as a stylist, as a producer, as a photographer. It's just difficult, right? You just have to kind of slowly but surely plug away and then when your chance comes you take it you take it right there is no kind of path to kind of get to the top so sometimes when you're a struggling person or maybe a struggling artist or maybe you had your little kind of five minutes of fame that Isle of McConan had then you kind of disappear into obscurity because people maybe stop fucking with you or because your music isn't good or because you fell out with the wrong people whatever the case may be you can sometimes have fantasies of getting back on top and then shitting on the people who didn't try to like who didn't help you who didn't reach back who didn't respond to your messages or who kind of like acted like they were too big for you because you fell off right it can be quite tempting to have that feeling and i know we've i know, I know i've had those feelings in my head especially when it comes to you know i'm not really the most like um you know mixy networky kind of like you know what you call it shake hands kissing babies types so i think that can kind of stunt your progress sometimes if you're not able to kind of you know do the whole ha ha he he game so i can understand isle of mcconan's position but i think he did maybe do a bit of an oopsie doozy there i think he kind of fucked up with his approach so let me explain the story so isle of mcconan ended up collaborating randomly with nba youngboy um, NBA Youngboy seems to be those type of people who doesn't really care about your clout or how well known you are. He seems to be really a people person. Like if he vibes with you and he likes what you're about, he's going to do a tune with you. And I guess um, Isla McConan's kind of been a bit, you know, out of the spotlight and not basically the most littest he's kind of been because of maybe him getting dropped from OVO or getting released. And then maybe the him kind of coming out and, you know, and telling everybody he's gay and stuff. Maybe that's kind of, you know, negatively affected him. But in general, he's kind of been a bit cold. So everyone was surprised when they saw somebody that I, like NBA Youngboy, he's one of the you know hottest people in the industry at the moment, kind of just agreed to collaborate with with Alev McConan. And then you see the videos of them hanging out and stuff. And it generally looks like he kind of like likes him as a person and was happy to kind of work with him. So it was a really good look for Alev McConan. So that happened, the tune come out, everyone's kind of happy with it. It's a good little look for Alev McConan to kind of get back out there and put his face back about and get back into the algorithm and whatnot. And then I guess Alev McConan was feeling himself was a bit annoyed because, because, right? Because <laughs> all of these people who I imagine probably weren't reaching back and get hitting him up and, you know, maybe leaving him on red, decided to reach out to him and say that they were, you know, that they were feeling his new tune he did with NBA Youngboy. And he decided to expose them via the instagram dms and i've got some of the dms here that people have taken screenshots of because i've no he took a screenshot of it and shared on his instagram stories so this is the first post um from a dms that he had with metro booming so it shows here it shows here that i love mcconan had been messaging metro booming before right if you can see here the flipping texas right it shows I Love McConan has been messaging at Metro Boomin. He tagged him in a couple Instagram posts. There's maybe a little sliver of an emoji there. But so far, you can see there are one, two, three interactions that I Love McConan has had with Metro Boomin. And Metro Boomin hasn't replied once. No double tap on a comment, no nothing, right? No emojis, nothing. So he just left him on scene. But then as soon as the video came out of um, I Love McConan with NBA Youngboy, Metro Boomin immediately replies to him without him actually saying anything to him. He says, What's good, family? We gotta shake the ground up. We gotta shake the world up again. So, after ignoring him for what feels like what, let's say on paper is like three months, right? He now suddenly replies to him and says, What's good, family? <laughs> yeah, which is super insulting because, you know, he didn't reply to me before and all of a sudden now we're family because I'm, I'm collaborating with one of the hottest guys in the scene now and we've got to shake up the world. So clearly that's going to hurt. And then the second screenshot, I think maybe Sway Lee. Yeah, the second screenshot is Sway Lee, which is even worse. Um, he says, Happy be there to Sway Lee last year. Nothing. He says yo to him in October 12th, nothing. He says aye to him in October 23rd, nothing. 
he then posts something about Sway Lee, um, you know, sharing his music to him on Instagram and nothing on April the 13th. Three absolute air pies. And then randomly, Sway Lee replies and says, new shit hard foo. So again, I would be annoyed by that if I was him. And then the last one I think, I think is Post Malone. Um, he says um, to Post Malone in November. Hi, can I come to your show tomorrow in Portland? LOL, probably never going to see this. Post Malone never replies. <laughs> then he posts him, then he texts him, then he texts, then he um, puts him on another flipping, um, no, sorry. Uh, he mentions him in another story here on July 27th and he doesn't reply either. And then again, randomly, he says, I love you so much, dad. I miss you. Thank you for the love. When are we going to jam? So clearly it kind of shows that you know, the industry is a little bit, what can you do for me lately? And is obviously an industry where your friends are only your friends if you're hot. If you're not hot, then your popular friends not become your friends because you're not useful to them. And I think we all know this to be a fact. And I think if you're a creative or you work in the creative industries or whatever it may be, it can be difficult to resist this urge to air out people like this. But I think in the long term, it is kind of, um, it is not helpful to your long-term career for people to know that you're the one who has a tendency to flip out and freak out at things that I think are a normal occurrence. Should this be something that is kind of discouraged? Of course. Is this something that's nice to see where you reach out to somebody to kind of work with them and they're not replying to you because they feel like you're cold and they're not going to gain anything from it? Of course. But I feel like this happens to literally everybody. So it's mostly on you as an artist to make sure that you are at a level where you're hot enough where these occurrences don't occur anymore right where you don't have the ability there's no possibility of you kind of falling out of love where then it's going to affect your personal relationships i feel like you kind of have to play the game a little bit better and i think in general i'm a big believer in kind of playing the game as it is and not trying to you know force the world to be the way that you want it to be so if the industry is a bit fake if the industry is a bit what have you done for me lately then play that game become as hot as you can on your own do it, you know, in the same way the NBA Youngboy kind of did it, right? Do it on your own, on your own accord, without kissing anybody's, you know, without kissing anybody's bum. And essentially, you can call your own shots because then you will then become undeniable and everybody will want to work with you because of that. And I feel like I have kind of over the years started to understand that in my own line of thinking even though i was always kind of like that i never really understood people who would go out their way to ask for help and stuff and this kind of stuff like even the stuff he's requesting i think in general you should know better than if you're if you're out of macona regardless of what relationship you had with post Malone before you should know better than reaching out to him directly to try and see if you can come get tickets to go to a show just buy the tickets you know buy the tickets yourself go to the show and then try and sneak backstage and see if you can meet post malone that'll be a better way to kind of go about it if you're out of McConan. If you're out of McConan, you should know that, you know, Metro Boomin, one of the hottest producers out at the moment, isn't probably going to want to produce with you because he's at the, you know, he's collaborating with fucking The Weeknd and shit. Do you know what I mean? He's collaborating with all the biggest, hottest people at the moment. So you should be trying to get your clout up, get your name out there again, restart your career, and then reach out to him if you can that way. So you become somewhat mutually beneficial for both of you in that regard you can't go into these kind of things expecting things when you can't don't really have nothing to offer and i feel like in general as as, as crash said um it's kind of bad for i love mccona because part of the reason why he got dropped from ovo you know not to do with the whole gay thing but because of you know the things he might have said about drake and shit that's the reason why he's been kind of out of favor in the industry because he just burns bridges because he's clearly somebody that people probably don't like too much in a personal capacity one yeah i mean he kind of talks too much he gets too emotional he says stuff in public he shouldn't say and i feel like this isn't going to help him if anything he should have just rid the wave of positivity off the back of that i love an nba young boy song got the most out of it and then later on if he wants to air people out air people out but airing people out just as that tune song drop is a bit dumb because we all know this industry is fake we all know the industry is full of you know um, empty fucking love and fake love whatever we all know that all the guys out there that are saying so and so is their family so and so is their brother it's only because they're well known it's only because they're popular like I've said this in the longest time I've always been annoyed at the fact that especially in the art scene especially here in London there's a lot of people who will go around you know posting 
congratulations or I'm so proud post on Instagram with their friends. And usually their friends are verified on social media. Usually they work really cool jobs. Usually it's a very cool promotion or, you know, more more often not it's a cool promotion. It's them working at a cool brand and a cool job and a cool capacity. But you rarely see these people on their Instagram pages, you know, being proud of a friend of theirs who, you know, became an, an area manager of a retail store over a chain of retail stores right it doesn't happen it's always i'm so proud of my friend for doing the photography for balenciaga or for modeling for balenciaga because their brand is in this store that's why they're so proud of so if that's the case then you just have to try and get to a level that somebody can say that they're proud of you and just use it to your advantage you shouldn't be trying to air people out in that regard and see it the way it is um personally that's what i would do anyway but um obviously um out of mcconan you know you can't tell people how to feel offended and how not to respond to things especially if he's been out in the cold as much as he has the last post here um out of mcconan didn't stop off of those dms i guess the one person who really got offended i think you know a clear example of knowing that you did something wrong is the way you respond and clearly Sway Lee didn't like that he got aired out the way he got aired out and he decided to go in the comments and reply back to him I love McConan and he said the following Sway Lee said bro I was saying that you I was saying that to you Goofy not for any reason besides spreading love I'm good in the game I knew you was throwing up on shrooms bro relax the fuck i saw you on the TL, heard a new jam and privately told you it was hard don't be that guy that's what's funny though bro and I think don't be that guy is the one, right? That that little saying, that is essentially him saying without saying, don't take shit personal. I know it's a bit harsh what I did and it's a bit cringe and awful. It makes you feel bad because I'm now only replying back to you because you've got a good song. But that's the reality of the industry. It kind of is what it is. Don't be that guy. You know what I mean? Kinda just be cool. But obviously you can't tell I love McConan how to be offended. And he replies back and says, yes, it was a beautiful garment and you stayed booked and busy. Working is no denying. You have a nice day. Post a link if you like the album rollout. You should have been outside, but you was ignoring my, you was ignoring a nigger. <laughs> so I like the fact that he's on this time. I'm not going to lie. It is quite nice to live precariously through him. But I think if that was me, I would be a little bit more, you know, I'd play the game to my favor. If Swaley's in my DMs, jump on a track with me. Let's get the track going. If Post Malone's in my DMs, jump on a track with me. Let's get a post going. I mean, use it to your advantage. Use that fucking clout to kind of get the most out of it because this is kind of stopping your blessings, really, because it's making you look like you take things too personally. And then it continues. He says, we can chop it up anytime. You see me, though. I don't do public drama shit. Stay up. And other McConan replied back and says, well, chop it up. It's love. If, if It's love. It's just a conversation. Don't be mad that the only way I get support is if some drama going on. You know the music fire. You know everybody been trying to deny it. It ain't no beef. You stay up too. So I love that Ella McClellan is still giving it to him in that regard. It's still nice to see. And I think he had some other interactions with him. But I think in general, this is a clear indication that the scene is what it is. It's fickle. It is quite what have you done for me lately. But I also don't think it's a bad thing. I think you should just use it to your advantage and try to get the most out of it. Because quite clearly, these motherfuckers don't give a fuck about anybody, especially if they've got nothing to really offer them. So don't be too emotional in that regard. I personally think people should just take it easily. But again, you know, I can't tell him how to be offended. I can't tell him how to feel. So this kind of makes a lot of sense.